You're welcome back. Nigeria is a land of many opportunities with bustling population of over 200 million people. Now, whether Nigeria is a profitable place to live depends on your definition of profitability and your willingness to take risks. The country has a large and growing population, a young workforce and a wealth of natural resources. However, it is also it also has a high level of corruption, insecurity, and poor infrastructure. There are many successful Nigerians who have built businesses, created jobs, and made a difference in their communities. However, there are also many Nigerians who are leaving the country and who are struggling to make ends meet. The country faces a number of challenges, including corruption, insecurity, and poverty. Nevertheless, or nonetheless, our Lebanese and Chinese friends have seen opportunities to flourish in Nigeria, and now they call it home. So tonight, we are asking the question, are there real opportunities in Nigeria to thrive, for Nigerians to thrive in Nigeria? Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. I'll take that again. 081-803-84663. So, guys, mm. what do we say mm. about this? Are there real, first of all, yes or no? Are there real opportunities yes. in Nigeria? I think they are. Chino, yes or no? This yes or no. First. <laughs> yes or no. First. Yes or no. I wish there was a word in between. <laughs> no. Yes, I know, right? But, yeah, there are real opportunities. Not yeah. a lot, but there are real opportunities, actually. When, when you say... When, when you say real opportunities, there are a lot... Not, not, no, a lot. not a lot. Not a yeah, lot. Not a lot of opportunities. So, what do you mean by not a lot? Okay, so first, let me let me say this. Um, I remember them was asking a question backstage. And I said, when we come on here, I'll answer that question. First, see, Nigeria is one of the most populous countries, if not the most populous country in Africa. It is. Right? Yes, it is. Based on statistics. Number two, Nigeria has over 70%, maybe about 70%, about 72 percent of people under 35. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And you, we know what that means. Youngest population. Youngest population in Africa. We know what that means. Yeah. You have yeah. people under yeah. 70 percent. That is. You have a workforce. That's you true. Get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that already tells you that, look, there is a massive business opportunity right there because mm -hmm. there are people that are going to buy, there are people that are going to sell, yeah. there are people that are going, going to work. work. Right? So this is what I mean by there are real opportunities. Yeah. But at the same time, when I say that there are not a lot of real opportunities, what I'm then talking about is, okay, we, when we're talking about the Lebanese and the Chinese guys, right, and then I remember we were saying something about how are we favoring the people, the people in the white skin other than people in the black skin and things like that. If you look around um, the commercial areas, you find out that most of the restaurants, most of the supermarkets are run by these guys. Mm -hmm. You barely ever find... Do you know... <laughs> in fact, I found, I found out something very recently. Do you know that even the Nigerian-owned supermarkets and restaurants are literally paying the Le Lebanese, Lebanese guys to manage, to manage oh, yeah. and run for oh, definitely. Them. So what exactly is the reason behind this? Okay. Sorry to cut you off that mean. But do you know that? Huh? If you walk into a restaurant today, I, I think it's a mindset which has now also affected the government. If you walk into a restaurant today <laughs> and you see a Lebanese guy as the manager or as the whatever, yeah. the, the, the front, the... the how do I put it now? The face yeah. of the rest of the representative. People tend to, mm, okay, calm down and listen and they are more receptive and open to the person other than when it is a Nigerian. So that, let us start from there. We are our own problem. First things first. Now, this also has now translated to the governments. So all the, let me not say all, but most of you see CCECC, CCECC. <laughs> 
What I remember as a child, I used to ask my mom, what is this? This is China civil uh, civil engineering company. Mm. And I'm like, why? So are you telling every day there are people graduating as engineers, engineers, civil engineers, civil engineers, civil engineers? So why is it that most of the construction, major constructions that are done in our country is by the Chinese? So clearly there is something that we probably don't know yet. I don't know if it's that there's some trade by butter. But then, how many going construction companies owned by Nigerians do we actually have in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Because you cannot possibly want them to, you cannot possibly want people to employ a certain, um, you can't expect, for instance, I think Dangote Refinery. There was something about it yeah, one time like when people employed, were like they employed them um, Indians, or Indians. Yeah, yeah. They did. but then again, how many people in Nigeria have actually worked in a refinery before yeah. that they can be employed? And that's a good. Do you point. see the problem? Yeah. Are we so even employing you first? So it's more about experience, <laughs> and the thing about it, dragging it back, is be, it, one of the reasons would be I'll answer your question would be because maybe because they are better managers. No, NJ, I'm and not they have disputing their, that. Their business sense. I think it brings See, us back to you the educational not... system of Nigeria again. See, I don't think that now it what? equips its citizens enough True. to actually have certain types of experience to function in certain types of capacity. Well, it's when people say this experience, exp I have a problem with this experience thing people are talking about. How do you gather experience? Fine, you gotta experience by actually working. You start yeah. from But then somewhere. again, are there even people to do the work enough to gain the experience? There are people, what are you saying? Go and bring in all those Igbo boys from Monicha. But do we really need the Igbo boys? Or we actually need the people that know what they are supposed to do? How do... That, that mean, you're still not... So now, we're saying that we, ha, we don't have people. And I'm telling you that we have people. Okay, you've then brought up another point that these people, how do they know what to do? They will learn. That is how... You cannot just keep sitting down and saying that they don't, you don't have the experience, you don't have the experience. How do you start? It's not from one day. You start before you gather zero, one, two, three years experience, five years, ten years experience. With time. That's how it works. But we are not even willing. Now, that's even talking about manpower now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's talk about infrastructure. No, infrastructure is bad. That's another Nigeria. problem. That's one of the things that is even killing businesses in that's Nigeria. Another problem. Imagine that you want to start a, a water manufacturing company, for example. I'm, I'm not even talking about regulatory bodies, though. I've not gone to policies, though. Yeah. I'm still just that, talking about now starting. infrastructure. Yeah. Maybe I decide to start maybe manufacturing bread, a bakery, mm -hmm. or chicken pie, or something like that. Do you know what the cost of power will do to me? <laughs> now, okay, I start. Maybe somehow, some I'm able to get grants <laughs> that's by local because the truth is that these grants exist but we are not very we are not very aware of them and they're not particularly they're not, they're they're not, not even open advertised. to the public yeah, yeah they're, not, they're not open they're to not, the public it's very, usually by chance that you get to even hear about public, them yeah. okay somehow somebody even get this one then you start to pay for power then navdac will come knocking on your door you have to get um navdac number approval. NAVDAC license and approval mm -hmm. you do that tax you come, you pay that one. Then you now have to employ people to pay. So there, there, there are like a whole lot of things. These other white guys, on the other hand, have access to foreign exchange. And we know what it is. The rate of foreign exchange to Naira. To Naira, yes. So it's sort of easier for them to pump in a certain amount of money to do these businesses. Hmm. So that is one angle. Okay. That is one that, angle. I mean, because trust me, Chinelo, there are a lot of angles to this. We can, we, if we start here on all the angles, we won't end this conversation. But like I said earlier when we started, there's a conversation that I need us to have. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And that is a conversation about how international companies are thriving in Nigeria. And then we'll look at a few of the opportunities we think are currently that people can actually look Tap into because into. we can't as much as we say that there are no opportunities they are there because are, there are people there there are companies trying. so we have to be able to direct our audience to where those opportunities are and how Existing. they can key into it mm. well we'll go we'll take a short break at this point and then we'll see you shortly If you're just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out. 
and we are discussing the topic, are there real opportunities for Nigerians to thrive in Nigeria? Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. Our phone lines are now open. Please call us on 070-2500-7749. I'll take that again. 070-2500-7749. So, back to our conversation. Yeah. Well, How okay. do international businesses thrive in Nigeria? What are they doing that we are not looking into? What are, what are, the, big, what are the opportunities, if any? What are the opportunities that they're giving? Maybe there's some kickback or something. I'm trying to understand. Are they giving... Is there something that they are paying <laughs> that other businesses need to pay so that we are treated the same way or do we have to bleach our skin? Is it all about the skin? And I don't think it's I don't all about think the so. skin. It's not, it's I don't not. think so. I think, um, you know, when a foreign um, business, yeah. I say foreign now because it could be a Nigerian trying to establish a business overseas. Okay. When a foreign business is trying to establish in a country, I feel, you know, the government of that country sees it as pumping into the economy of that country because whether you like it or not, you're going to pay tax. Yeah. So I don't know how many Nigerian businesses pay tax in Nigeria. So a foreign company coming into Nigeria will definitely pay tax and that's going to do something to the economy of Nigeria. Yeah. So I think we can look at it from that, from that angle. angle. And like you also said, they are very, um, they, they have access to FX. You know, so because if you bring, for instance, dollars into Nigeria, by the time you change it, it's going to be a lot more than when it just remains in dollars. So it enables them have access, um, access to funds yeah. to actually do business. I, that's what I think. If there are some other benefits that are being gotten from this, I would also like to learn at this point. But <laughs> I'm going to come from the angle of um, opportunities, uh, if there are really opportunities in Nigeria. I like to believe that Nigeria is a fertile ground and it's very marketable. It's just quite unfortunate that it feels like our government and economy is working against us. Yeah. But then it doesn't take away the fact that there are real opportunities in Nigeria. One opportunity I like to say is um, agriculture. I have always said agriculture. I have always been a fan of agriculture because even Nigeria as a country is depending on agriculture. So, I, don't, I mean, I don't see why anybody does not see that that's actually a business idea. Yeah. Do you get, there are, um, you can see um, renewable power. I get that there are certain types of business that are very capital in, I mean, intensive, intensive yeah. and not anybody can just go into this business. But it doesn't take away the fact that it is actually a business opportunity that can thrive in Nigeria because we don't even have constant power supply in Nigeria. Yeah. So if, imagine if you go into renewable energy. I mean, you are going to you have a target market clearly, and then you are going to make your money from there. Mm -hmm. So there are several. There's well, Nigerian government as as a whole can even buy into thori um, tourism rather because there are, I, I believe that there are places in Nigeria and even culture in Nigeria that. Foreigners can come into the country to learn about, and it's going to fetch a lot of money into Nigeria economy. Yeah, but then again, since Nigerian government is not willing to, I don't know, maybe go that route. Can we hold that thought? We okay. have a caller on the line. We have Pastor Oladipo from Igomu. Igomu. Pastor Oladipo, are you on the? Are you on the line? Yes. Yeah. Oh, good evening. Can I go ahead now? Yes, yes, yes. please go ahead. Yeah. Hello? Can I go ahead now? Yes, Pastor Landipo, please go ahead. Uh, good evening, ladies. Good Hello, evening. good evening. <laughs> I greet all of you. Now, my, my take is this. Okay. There are great opportunities in Nigeria. <clears throat> but there is only one bottleneck. And that bottleneck is what uh, Nelo talked about. It's just that she didn't go deep into it. Our mentality yeah. and our mindset. Do you know that in our football team or sport as a whole, nobody will give you chance if you are not carrying a different skin. Are you getting me? Even when we have local coaches that can do well, once anything that involves any other color, we 
tend to jump at it. So my take this evening is that let's change our orientation, let's change our mindset. There are great opportunities in this nation and we'll go far with it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. So yes. I feel like we're not addressing the issue, Sha. I mean, I don't think it's about skin color. No, are there well, opportunities in Nigeria? Yes. Yes. Do we there have are a problem with actually grabbing this opportunity and thriving in it. Yes. Yes. Because there's the we part of it. Yeah. But I don't there's, think it's about color, Sha. No. Well, so it's an opinion. For Nigerians. Yeah. For Nigerians. Yes. There are opportunities for Nigerians. So, but then we were just sort of identifying what the stumbling blocks, blocks are, are to those opportunities. The those, and to you see you this thing about, about mentality and mindset is a very, is a very real thing. Yeah. And I'll give you an example. Right. Now, where I work, I've realized that a lot of people, because I mean, we have a lot of, we have different races. Let me put it like that. And do you know that in most cases, even the black people, we, all, we just have that thing at the back of our heads that the other people that have other people are superior. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah. Meanwhile, that. For example, it, my team lead is a Nigerian. I have someone else who is so, superior to me, of course, but she has a different skin color. But you know that most of the guys on the team respect and regard her more, More than, than my team lead. Well, absolutely. I guess. Do that. you understand? Yeah. Today, we literally had to address that, saying that, no, look, this person is actually the team lead. She actually answers to this other person as her line manager. So you might as well want to fix that in your head. But why did that happen? Because of skin. So, already. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give an example okay. of that, a live example. I'm a, you know, one of my previous places of work, I had a, a marketing manager. Mm who was working out of the UK and I was leading the team, sales and marketing team in Nigeria. So she's the regional marketing manager because we had an office in Kenya. So it's a case of she manages the marketing, but in my opinion, because it's sales and marketing, mm. she has to, you know, she, the normal thing is for her to report to me mm. so that we can work together. Since I headed the team in Nigeria, Nigeria is our head office. But because of, like you said, skin color mm. and a few other things. Okay, let I'll come back to that. Okay. So we have uh, we have Dexter from Lekki on the line. Hi, Dexter. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Please let's hear yeah. your comment. Yeah. Let's hear your comments. Please go ahead. Okay. So what I'd like to comment on the influx of people into Nigeria. And I'll take it on the because I have an experience. I work with some of them. Sorry, Dexter, so please could you speak oh. up a bit so oh. that we can hear you clearly? Okay. Is it better now? Yes, way better. Thank you. Yeah. So I think I'll focus on the letting people influence the conscience. And this is just my personal opinion. Okay. Right? Mm. I mean, it's just like you guys said, it's surprising that we have more living investment in Nigeria, even while the Western and Caucasian people are leaving the country and taking their investment out of Nigeria. And what I think is actually because Lebanon, I mean, Lebanon is not very different in terms of the economy. Like, in fact, I think it's worse in the sense that, first of all, we have to say, from the index, 24-24. And then their currency even worse than Nigeria's currency. And on January 20th, their currency went from a to dollars So by extension, the currency is not even viable for you. Right? And... I believe they are just a problem. And then we have the advantage in this country, but they're not in this country. So they can navigate the water and climate. So when they bring their investment, they are not saying that, oh, just another person, just another corrupt person. They're saying this country that have come to invest in country. So now, while they are corrupt in their country, they're taking out whatever happens to their country. Because you can invest it there. You can invest it here. Mm -hmm. The US economy is still open. We have a policy that if you really try to 
do what you have to do to make headway. The fact that we can make headway because we have some people or some powers that be that just frustrate your head. But if you don't care, they don't have the same excuse for this power that we don't speak with them being things that they are fine. Uh, they get to do things fine. In fact, the outcome is that there is a list with corruption. I mean, I don't say too much. In the terms of how the people to work in Nigeria and to even you know, like, for example, what they have on the payroll, what you say, particular strategy, I know this one, I'm not going to say much. So I believe the reason they call it is because it's still the connectivity that they're coming from. I don't know much about the Chinese. Okay. Any smart investor will want to come and invest in anything. But the economic climate is like that. But for someone that already has a harsh economic climate, or even harsher than what Nigeria is very attractive. Yeah, keep doing it. Okay. I'm not trying to. Okay. And yeah, I think that like that. I'll probably do it in the I believe it's big. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Dexter. 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 I mean, yeah, I, I, I didn't Dexter. catch everything I, yeah, you said, I didn't catch but I think everything, but, yeah. I, I could pick out some things. Some he was talking things about the economy from where these people are coming, coming from. from. I think they have a, either I said they have a better economy, something along that line. Lebanon and then, not then, no, he's, he's, what he's, no, no, what, what he's trying I to say in that currency. Like it's not, it's not it's very not different from, from what we have here. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, possibly. Well, not very different. Okay, from I thought you said it's better. Yeah. Not because very different from what we have Until here. recently, the Naira was literally at, at par, par with, with the Lebanese, yes, uh, um, what's, currency, what's yes. their, this thing called? So I'm not sure. Well, I mean, I understand. I understand that, right? But you see, this is part of what we're saying. We don't like to give ourselves a chance in this country. The thing is that these people, I think we fail to understand that these people have more access to fund than we Nigerians actually have access to Funding. fund. Yes, because even if you're well, about to start a we, business now, you're going to go and take a business loan. The interest well, rates will choke you. See, there are a lot, like I said at the beginning, I feel like there are a lot of things. There are a list of things. If there we actually sit down things. here, we'll be, we'll be listing out too many things that... So we should prefer solutions. That's oh, me. Yeah. I believe that that's the, that's one of the major reasons why um, the foreign the foreigners are thriving in business more you than think? if Nigeria if Nigerians are actually doing business in Nigeria because first they have more access to funds and then again I don't know I don't know I feel yes so at, at some point I heard that the devaluation of Naira was actually very um, intentional. I'm not particularly sure why yeah. now, but then. Thinking about it again from a very layman perspective, if the value is, if the um, Naira is devalued, right, and then I have dollars for, I mean, dollar is a global currency, right? Yeah. I have dollars and I am looking for a, a, maybe a country to actually invest in. And like I was saying uh, um, earlier to you, the, the things that actually sell or rather that you get quick returns on are very every day since that's why you see that most of all these businesses that are owned by all these Lebanese and Indians they are supermarkets supermarkets because do you foods. get because food do you understand what I'm saying because those things so you can get things, quick returns they, yeah. they are not trying to go for specific products and um, what's it called now a customized product yeah. because those ones might take a while because you need to re really really appeal to your target audience those ones might actually take a while to get returns and at the end of the day you don't want to be in a country doing business and you're not adding to the economy of that country you yeah. will be sent out you know yeah. what? Let, me, let me cite an example. Mm. Let's look at clothes, for example. Fashion. Yeah. Do you know that it's very expensive, and I say that without mincing any words, to patronize a locally, a, 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 a Nigerian RTW brand? I um, let's not even go there, please. A Nigerian what? RTW. That they call RTW. That it's not even RTW. That takes five, five to seven working days. days. That we call let's, RTW. Let's not even go there. You are hearing things I like thirty-five thousand naira, seventy k. Why? Is it low top? Sixteen thousand. Why? I'm sorry, guys, but I'm not going to go into that conversation. <laughs> no, <about this. laughs> no, because mm, because no, like I see, say, it's not even right, right now. Say, there are things that would affect for any business to but get to that point where they are charging that much. They are paying like we early earlier we spoke about it. Dami, you mentioned it. Yeah. You mentioned about the issues with light, True. issues that affect businesses. So you have issues with light. Now, where a lot of businesses are dealing with 
petrol and fuel, diesel, high yeah. diesel, everything is increasing. And even though now, they are manufacturing for a business outside. That, that wants to thrive in Nigeria, how are they going to thrive? If they make, if they make, like, they might as well go to about to go and print it now in <laughs> mass production. So, but guess what? You are getting this RTW kind of businesses are made to measure, made to feed, will you wear, tailor will you wear made. NG, NG. <laughs> if I tell you, you tomorrow <laughs> now, eh, that NG, I now do a business, so I now make clothes from Umahia. <laughs> <laughs> and now yeah. I'm doing mass production and my tops now are 44K or 335. But you will see it on 200 people low. Will you buy it? No. Okay. That answers. The well, question. not. I'm sorry, but <laughs> see, there's Wait, no. Oh, we can't do anything to help that situation. We can't do anything to help <laughs> that situation. Sorry, guys. We have a <laughs> we have a bimbola on the call from Lekki. Hi, bimbola. Good evening. Hi. Um. Good evening. Good evening. Please share your comments. Okay. So I I want to start with the Chinese. Okay, so first of all, a lot of the Chinese uh, businesses are government-sponsored in most cases. Okay. And um, it's not just about Nigeria. If you go to most of the developing African countries, the Chinese are strongly represented there. As a matter of fact, a lot of African countries are indebted to the Chinese government. Mm. In fact, if you look at it critically well, we should be afraid of a second colonization if the African governments, uh, if, if they are not careful. Now, the Chinese, the, the Lebanese guys are very skilled when it comes to managing businesses. Now, not just Nigeria, if you go to a lot of African countries, you see the Lebanese guys are more, and, and the major business they run in most of these places are actually supermarkets. So they are very skilled when it comes to running supermarkets, when it comes to running hotels, anything that has to do with hospitality business. The Lebanese guys, let's give it to them. They are very experienced and they know what to do. However, in Nigeria, there are too many opportunities. But you see, because a lot of these guys come into Nigeria with a lot of equity, which most Nigerians do not have access to, mm -hmm. except for the big players. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's some of the issues we have here. But in a case where the Nigerian government is able to make good policies that will favor indigenous businesses, you would see a lot of businesses beginning to come up in Nigeria. Nigerians are too smart not to have businesses run in this country. So if we have policies that the government creates an enabling environment for businesses in Nigeria, you will be surprised at how Nigerians will begin to fly. So there are too many opportunities here. But a lot of Nigerians are handicapped yeah. because the policies favor a few and not just everyone. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much, Abimbola. Thank you. And I love what Abimbola said about strong, you know, bringing up that uh, top uh, phrase there. And he just met, dropped it in there, strong government backing. Yeah. So which means that most of the time when, you know, there's a contract out or they need to put out a contract for something, maybe like road construction or something like that. S sometimes, sometimes there's someone at the other end, like yeah, there's someone it. within yeah, the system yeah. and they now go and, you know, this whole back end thing, go and co-opt someone, say, okay, I want you to come and bid for this business, but I'll take some profit. But then do we have Nigerians in that industry or in yeah. that particular um, space. Are you that, saying that there are no Nigerian civil, com civil engineering companies that actually have the same capacity? If you oh empower God. them, why not? 
Well, so that brings us back to the government. Do you understand? That's so what that, I'm. That, that's the that's the end conversation. Huh? Huh? That is the end conversation. But then again, Go I don't really see. Uh, I mean, I can say for some other industry, but for the construction no, industry, Damnola, I don't no, no, there are actually see. I don't think there is any. There's particularly any industry eh, yeah. that you cannot find Niger Nigerians that are good. True. I don't, I honestly don't think because so. I feel like Talk about healthcare, knowing even Nigerians yeah, and yeah. the way they are, we're very resilient I'm people. We're everywhere you are strong. The North Pole. I'm Give so us sure that you'll find someone living comfortably in Nigeria. Living comfortably. Have you thought about it? Why is it that we have these our same Nigerians, yeah. right? That's thriving when they leave the country. Thank you. Now, I know you were heading to that. <laughs> That's where, no, of course, I, I have so, to go there. I'm, I mean, so <laughs> just like you said, I'm going to continue from where. Uh, Chinelo stopped. Chinelo was mentioning a few of the opportunities that are currently or areas that you know I, I said it that Even we were going tech. to look at areas. Let's take, look at tech. Tech just started. See how many Nigerians if I tell you how many Nigerians are out of this country on, on if I can say tech visas if you understand <laughs> what I mean. On tech visas like every day. Right now if you see someone who is good with even if you see a solutions architect in Nigeria, mm. see, see, they have to be paid. Where he is, it's just uh -uh. that he hasn't, he has either not woken up to the real, the power that he has, and what he can, and or he's that kind of person have... who is close-minded and uh, just wants just to live in Nigeria. Stay. Yeah, yeah. Or he's doing remote work. Then like any like dollars and living and enjoying here in Nigeria. In yeah. So I think everything actually boils down to the government. So the government is not even helping its people. Yeah. So I think that the reason why the government is seemingly that it looks like they are seemingly helping the foreigners thrive in nigeria in terms True. of business it's just because they want them to pour into the economy of the and also of the they're going to get they always get something of course on the they're side going to pay tax if i'm being yeah they are going I, to pay tax I, um I, I, I was not talking about that <laughs> why you no 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 they will pay tax it's nigerian you companies that can be like that like that no no it's 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 international not companies, they will pay tax it. it's not just they will pay tax there's more there is definitely more than i would like to know i would like to know the more that there are a lot of industries that nigerians can thrive in True. You know, we mentioned fashion, we mentioned tech, there's beauty, even beauty, natural beauty. A lot of beauty products are out there now. True. A lot of people are doing natural okay. Product, beauty yeah. products. And True. it's Not really organic. working. Not <laughs> organic. No, let's just... I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not there. I'm not part of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> not organic. NJ and Dami left the room. Like so, <laughs> and even Nigerians have carpentry work. You know, yeah. this, ah. this has also been opened in Canada. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, we do yeah. Welders and carpenters, yes. Yeah, we do yes. a lot of home and, uh, you know, office furniture yeah. and equipment and stuff. And the Nigerians would rather import from Turkey than and to actually I'm do it in you, this Nigeria. Then there's even computing. Just computer work. Like, because we're very good and we're very skilled in a whole lot of things. See, Nigerians thrive when they leave this country. I don't know why. So, for the longest time, I just thought that there's some... It's almost like, you know when they say... Let's go traditional. When they say somebody swore for your grandfather. But, so there's a hedge of on no on, one, one of our I don't know what words to use it. enabling environment. I think that's that's that, that's the way. So that's why I would say that's why I went from the traditional. You know, we're very mm, traditional in mm, Nigeria. So mm. I would say if for the longest time you almost think that there's this covering on Nigeria that no there's nothing profitable that can happen. The moment you step out of that what circle, good can come people, out a lot of people go out of the country and oh wow, you see some of them. And you're like, what happened? In one year, their life is transformed. One so second. We have another caller oh, on right. the phone. We have Kennedy from Port Harcourt. Hi, Kennedy. Good evening. Kennedy, are you there? Good evening, my assistant on waves. Hello, Kennedy. Hello, Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Thank you yeah, for joining yeah. us. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can we join can. you. Kindly make your comments. You yes, we can. Yes, we can. Good evening, good evening, I'm calling you. Yes, so um, I, I was listening to you um, with this topic of uh, if there are opportunities in Nigeria. Of course, there are opportunities for Nigerians in Nigeria. Yeah. There are more opportunities than even you ladies can think of. Mm -hmm. You know, we are a country where we, you people mentioned a lot of them, there are no power. There are no good infra infrastructure. infrastructures. Yeah. There are security issues and all, all, all that. You know, those are opportunities, actually. Yeah. 
You know, when you're from a country where most of those things does not, like most infrastructures are not regularly up. I think we're oh, oh wow! And I was it's actually it's enjoying yeah, that. He was, and I, I was just jotting that down doing. because he made a very valid point that Nigerians. I think what I'll continue from where he <laughs> was. So I, what one point that I got from Kennedy is that Nigerians should see opportunities from even the, the problem, current problems, problems that, we, that have. we have. So our like. Nigerians will thrive if we see our problems and create solutions. Because when you create solutions, you first of all, you counter that problem. Okay. And two, you make money off it. I think another point I want to come from is this. Okay, we keep saying that Nigerian businesses are not thriving. I, one of the reasons why I think that businesses in Nigeria might not be thriving is because of the consumers. Because, I mean, there's a business and I'm sure that we're trying to meet certain needs and demands. Right, but are Nigerians really trusted people? Because we talk about mindsets. The, the truth is that an average Nigerian will trust a white person, not necessarily because of their skin color, but because they have proven to be trusted over time than a Nigerian business. <laughs> but that's the truth. Because you are buying something on Instagram, for instance, and you will find out that what you see is not what you get. So that, how am I then supposed to... everywhere now. <sighs> it happens well. abroad too now. You order from Alibaba and... You order one thing and get another thing. From See, where, where exactly we're talking about you? artisans. For, okay, <laughs> no, let's no, even no. leave the online business. Let's where exactly regular... are you <laughs> placing that order from? Because if you order from Alibaba in, in, in the UK, you, you will ship it back. Eh, and then they'll bring it no, and they'll, they'll send you the right that's, size. That's, so I mean, that's what we're saying. Different. So we're in Nigeria where we can't ship, we can't ship it back. I that we are particularly trusted people in Nigeria. Let's even look at the artisans. You will pay a carpenter to come and do something for you. He's something else. See, we do. Now, do you want me to give the furniture of my house to that person to do for me? I so don't we have think a lot so. of, this is what I ordered as a okay, game, this is what I got. I don't so. I would rather go and buy it in Turkey. Because I am sure yeah. that I am going to get value for my money. So, you see, you see. Now, so, let's look at we need to like come back to our own selves as the problem as well. No, see, let's, I agree with you 100. I agree with you. But guess what? If we start, these people have associations. Right now, it's not strong. It, we can't hold them accountable because there are no, how do I put it now? There's no, there's nobody there. There's no body or there's no. There are not agencies or authorities that they're, they're accountable to. to. Thank you. So now imagine that you have a national world association or national carpenters association. Is it effective like or a regulatory mm -hmm. body? That's what I'm saying now. That this now brings us back. See, if people see that this thing is serious, do you think that the banking system was like this? Now you see that we have our problems at the end of the day. No, we've always known. We've always and that's known that's the reason this. why we have conversations about it. Because we're trying to... <laughs> for me, I feel like the reason why we have conversations like this is not just because we're trying to retreat our problems. Yeah. We're trying to get some people who haven't heard of these problems or who don't even know that these problems exist. Because there are people like that. To learn certain ways of moving forward in different directions. Because I feel like as a country, we can't continue to do the same thing over and over, over, and over again, expecting a different result. Results, yeah. So why we keep talking about this thing and we share our opinions, our different opinions, because we all have different opinions, mm -hmm. is so that people can catch on something that will change their life. That's the whole idea, is to catch on something so that the change can start from somewhere. Because if we don't discuss it, how do we even know that we have a problem? But you know it's very difficult to actually birth change when you're standing alone. Then do you do you, ah. do you do you do you believe? I believe in change. Do you I believe, believe first of all? Change. You need to change. Do you believe that it's possible to even change? Because it just feels like you are part of the problem. Because it feels like you have a mindset of this thing cannot change. Funny enough, no. Funny enough, no. But then again, we need, just need maybe to stay realistic. Her, some people. Come on. So, so, she's so, representing the people. So we have so, to um, be and maybe I'm playing the devil's advocate. I mean, advocate so in this point. I don't bit, know. I feel like we have to be a bit more optimistic <laughs> hmm. if we're going to see any sign of change. And the thing about it, we're Christians, yeah? Yeah. If I can speak freely. So as, even as a Christian, you have your, they said there's a lot of power in the tongue. True. So if we as Christians, and you know, the funny thing is always that we have a lot of churches everywhere, but we, most of the times, our major problem in Nigeria is that we don't even believe in the things we pray for and we ask for. We ask the government to give us all these good roads, good this. Do you drive well? I don't even so know if it, No, no, not you. <laughs> but if you don't drive well, how is the road going to remain good? Yeah, Do you understand what I yeah, mean? Yeah. So there are things, there's a part that we need to play as people. 
So we, even from the, and that's the mindset, it goes back to the mindset that um, Chinelo was talking about. If we do not set our mindset right, we will always be in this place of, we're going to be good, it may not be good, we're going to be good, it may not be good. And guess what? Even that is confusing for God. Because they won't No, play. let's just think about it. They if you play. want this, <laughs> say you want this. Yeah. And <laughs> so half of the time, our bless, I feel like half of the time, sorry I'm going spiritual, but it's, it's sometimes it's a good way to explain it. Yeah. Half of the time, I feel like, you know, it's like your problem is, your, your solution to your problem is on its way to you. And then you open your mouth and you say, you prophesy. And you say, I don't even think this thing is going to work. Why mm. am I even wasting my time? Yeah. I don't believe in this thing. You see that thing you said? Can start <laughs> so your solution starts coming back. Yeah, yeah. And then you pray you again mean. and it starts coming. So it's a, that's why they call, that's why even the Christian race is a journey. Because half of the time we're the cause of our own problems. True. Guy is just sitting down there waiting to bless you. You are the one holding it back. Because each time you say something, and they've told you that you have power. But you do not even believe you that you have power, that yeah, power. Yeah. Even as Nigerians, we say we have power. But we do not believe in our power. It was until this last election, before Nigerians started to believe in the power of the youth or in the power of the population, irrespective of what the results were. Do you understand? So I understand, and I'm coming from the point, I think however we're going to go about it will be from the point of we have to have the right mindset in order for us to even move forward. Yeah? For us, for any change to happen, we have to want the change to happen and believe that the change can even happen. And mm. government needs to do better. So. Mm. Oh, no, definitely. We know that the government needs to do better. Government owes everybody. It's, their, it's our right as citizens. And that's, the, that's what births loyalty mm. for, you know, country. You go to the U.S., the reason why the, uh, a, a, a basic U.S. citizen would say, God bless America, and always would stand by God, God bless, bless America, America, is because... America produces, at least gives them food, clothing, shelter. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to and pray it, about it. And they don't even have to pray about it. It's not a prayer topic because it's not a spiritual <laughs> attack. It's something that the government wala, is supposed wala, to give to you. <laughs> so if the government is not doing that, then how do you do yours? People in the government, they are the one backing all these um, foreign people up to See. come and be collecting contracts for me in Nigeria. Sha, Loki. <laughs> Loki. Let me take your last word. So, Chinelu. What do you I have to say? What are your last words? We've said it all already. <laughs> I don't think there's anything more to say. Right? The government needs to do better. Provide an enabling environment. Provide the right tools. Give us good regulatory bodies and policies. And, then... and stop changing policies every now and then. And the exchange rate should stay in one place. It should start going up and down. That will save the effect. <laughs> so it's a bit tricky, but... Well, we've had a great conversation today, yeah, and I'm yeah, sure yeah. If, if we were given another hour, we'll keep at it, because uh, the thing about this conversation is that it has though. different angles to it. Do we uh, have yeah, a comment? Yeah, I have a Please comment. take the comment. All right, good evening, ladies. Most of them in their country travel hundreds of kilometers, and all they see are stretch of farmlands. They come here, all they see are stretch of bush and forests, and they wonder why we are not using the fertile lands to make money. Well, this person is Benson. Tunnelo, do you have comments? No, I don't. Okay, I have a comment here. Good evening, my adorable sisters. The problem with Niger uh, most Nigerians about businesses is that they are scared to lose their money, not knowing um, that most of the time, from one's failure, the experience uh, for you to do better, especially if you are resilient. We prefer to do business with quick money. This can be seen, especially among some of our youths today. They prefer to be your cadre riders than to learn work that would even that can't even take um, them any further in their education. This is from Mrs. Adeniji from Aja. So um, before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you've missed today's quote, here it is again. It's got me thinking what extraordinary opportunities are our friends from Lebanon and, Chinese, and China seeing in Nigeria that perhaps some of us haven't noticed. This is a comment from Uchena Uzo. See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screens. Good night. Bye.